Hi guys, greetings from central China's Hunan province. I'm Vicky with Xinhua News Agency, covering to you on the Second China Africa Economic and Trade Expo. The Second China Africa Economic and Trade Expo officially kicked off on Sunday in the central Chinese city of Changsha, and it will last until the 29th with a series of online and offline activities. The place I'm standing at is Changsha International Convention and Exhibition Center, which is the main venue for this year's expo. So this year, business representatives from different parts of Africa are gathering here to showcase their best products and services, trying to explore a quite big market with nearly 1.4 billion people. Uh, now I've come to the countries of honor pavilion. Don't know if you guys noticed, there are six African countries who participate as guests of honor at this year's expo. And they are Kenya, Ethiopia, Algeria, South Africa, Senegal, and Rwanda. And this is the Rwanda pavilion. Look how beautiful this pavilion is. So let's go inside and take a closer look. Oh, hi. Hi, hello. We are reporters with Xinhua News Agency. Yeah, oh, nice you? to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, how are you? I'm good and thank you. Okay, so could you say hi to our viewers? Hello, how are you? My name is Zabita Viani. I'm here as an exhibitor. Okay, Viani. Okay. Yes, so, uh, talking about Rwanda, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, it is a land of southern hills. So could you introduce to us about this beautiful country? Yeah, true. It's a, known as a land of a southern hills. Rwanda is officially the Republic of Rwanda. It's a sovereign state located in the East Africa. East Africa. Actually, it's Central East Africa and it's in the Great Lakes region. The last 25 years, Rwanda has remarkably changed from uh, the, all the history we know before the genocide in 1994, and now it's making itself to be to become like a reference for post uh, for the regions where you can do business from and investments. Oh, okay, so tell us about the products you brought here? Uh, the products we have here today, as you see them, we have coffee, we have coffee, coffee beans, coffee beans. we have tea, yeah. we have avocado oil, so, and we have chili. So what type of coffee beans is grown in Rwanda? Arabic coffee. Arabica? Yeah. Just like Ethiopia? Yes. But our coffee is almost the best in the world. Almost the best in the world? Yes. Uh, so what, uh, what makes uh, the coffee so competitive? I mean, is it because of the climate or something? Yes, sure. It's because of our climate. We have a very good climate. Our climate is always spring. Our weather is always spring. And the volcanic soil is suitable for the coffee because it's always chilled. So the weather is mild. It's very moderate. Yes, please. Is this uh, the most popular ones among Chinese consumers? Not only this, we have different types of coffee. We have this Gorilla coffee. Oh. We have, the, the, there are different companies. We have okay. CBC coffee. CBC? Yes, CBC. This one is oh, CBC. CBC. As you see, it's fully washed. Oh, okay. And we have many other different Tapes there over the at, at, at W W three booth. Oh, another. We have more there. Actually, here we are showcasing, but the sales are done from there. Okay, just showcasing some of them, but more products are displayed at W three exhibition. Yes, oh. please. Okay, so besides the coffee, what other products do we have here? The besides coffee, we have tea. Tea. Oh, tea, tea of this Rwanda. Is tea. Oh, Rwanda tea. Is this the black tea or 
We have different colors. There is green tea. Oh, green tea. This is green tea. Yeah. We have green tea. We have black. Black tea. Different model. Yes. Different types. So, uh, can we buy this from like uh, China's e-commerce platform like T-Mall? Yes. Our coffee and tea are on China e-commerce platforms like okay. T-Mall, Taobao, and Alibaba. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, um, back in 2019, uh, the first ever China Africa Economic and Trade Expo opened. Yes. Yeah. And so did, did you come in 2019? You mean the first expo. exhibition? The first expo. Yes, my country was here. Oh, so, okay, so this, at this time's expo, um, what's your expectations from this time's expo? Yeah, thank you. Our expe expectation from this expo, number one, is that we need to get more buyers and we double our volumes that we sell to China because the market is big but what we are seeing we are selling is not yet to our full satisfaction that's why we come to this exhibition in order to double the volumes of the products we are bringing to China yeah, you want more investors and potential buyers yes we need buyers and the investors at the same time because mm. our our, our suppliers, the suppliers from back home, they need more energy, more muscle, so that they can bring big volumes to the, to the huge market of China. If we have like, if we can get, our big expectation is to get investors here who can invest into agriculture and they boost the volume of the products we could bring here in large numbers. Yeah, I got that. So that's your expectation at this year's expo. Yeah. Yes. I, okay. So now you know um, the demand for African products, especially the Rwanda products in China. I think uh, are getting more and more, right? Yes. Maybe your biggest market was not China in the past. Maybe it's Europe. Am I wrong? Actually, it was Europe and America. Oh, Europe and America. North America? North America. Okay, now, but uh, now your target is maybe the Chinese market because it's quite a big market with 1.4 billion people. It's quite big with a lot of potential. Yeah, sure. We are targeting the Chinese market because it's a very big market yeah. which anyone would wish to tap in. Yeah. Yeah, and we're expecting to get bigger volumes from China. But like I said, we are not looking only for people who are buying goods from, from Africa. We need also the investors from China who can come and invest into Rwanda so that we can bring more products from Rwanda. In sectors like agriculture, medicine, education, tourism, and machinery. Uh, I'm still very interested in these kind of um, products. Uh, is this the chili sauce, right? This is the chili sauce. Uh, because uh, in Hunan, you know, Hunan dishes use lots of chili and peppers. So people here uh, really uh, love the chili sauce. Yes, I've just realized that even me, when I was going to the restaurants personally, I could find every restaurant, the food is it, it's spiced, which means our expectation from Honan is really big. In the morning, someone came to me and said, oh, I need to get a contact from the supply yeah. of this because I need chili. Yeah. When I was directing him to the other booth, he was like, no, I want it in big quantity. <laughs> I was okay. like, wow, this is it. Now yeah, the expectations, this yes, this is what I want. This is why you came here. It's like a dream, a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's really promising that Henan province, the Changsha people, will do good business with our agriculture guys. Yeah, I also believe that. And um, this is the avocado oil. This is the avocado oil? Yeah, I've never heard of this before. You, you don't know this fruit? Yeah, I know this fruit, but I don't know it can make into oil. Because we, we usually, in China, our oil made of um, corn, peanut, like... Yeah, 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 sure. Actually, Rwanda, Usually is known about, it's known of doing unique things. Unique things. Yeah, that's why 
because of our uniqueness, we did even the oil that you, that, like you've just said, you don't even know about it. We do it in Rwanda and we export it outside Rwanda. So is this one expensive? Not really expensive. It's an affordable price. When you go to the other booth where the sales are done, they will tell you your prices and you'll be excited about them. Okay, I think I, I'm going to buy some of this from Tmall, you know. Sure. I'm really interested in this kind of oil. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so, um, okay, so I saw over there, there are some drums. Yes. Is it the authentic of African drumming? Yeah, those are our crafts, actually. From the products I told you we have, we have coffee, yeah. tea, yeah. Chili, avocado oil, handicrafts. Handicrafts here. Yeah, here. These are the, uh, our handicrafts. Yeah, Even the, drum, the drums you're seeing there are handicraft. one of our handicrafts. Oh, hand, are they handmade? Yes, they're handmade. Oh, so what, what are they made, made of? Like they're made of from skin? wood and the skin. The skin. skin. Wow, it looks really beautiful. Can you tell us more about this handicraft? I didn't notice them before. The handicraft, this is a handicraft, just showing you thanks. In case you need to give like a gift to someone. Yeah. In a culture way, if you wrap this handicraft nicely and you give it to that person, it will really be a pleasure to have it. Okay. This one is like, this one is called Jira Obutkwari. It's like be a, be a hero. To lose it in the English, it's be a hero. So usually, how long does it take to make a handicraft like this? It take lots of time. The experts do them like not that long time, uh, because they have every all the equipment to make them. Experience. Yes, experience. but many are hand. They do them by hand. Okay. Yeah. Wow, so impressive. And this is our culture group. You saw the dancers. Yeah. So can they show show play the drums with us? Was yeah, they can have a sample. Can you have a sample of the drumming there? Yes, we're doing a, a broadcast. Wow. <laughs> so let's get started to enjoy this show. Okay. Is this drum a traditional instrument in Rwanda? Yes, sure. It's a traditional instrument. Are they only played by men or women? This one is played by men. Only but by men. Yeah, but as they are playing them, even ladies can dance their oh, dance. songs from the drum. So thank you for introducing so much. My pleasure, and I would welcome you to Rwanda. Yeah, I think Rwanda is definitely. You're welcome back home to. A country of a thousand hills. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, the Second China Africa Economic and Trade Expo is underway here in Changsha. And we are taking you on a tour inside the exhibition hall to find out more. So please stay tuned with us. And we've just finished exploring uh, the Rwanda pavilion. And let's move on to the next pavilion. And this must be the Republic of South Africa. Let's go find someone to talk to. Oh, hi. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I'm a reporter with Xinhua News Agency. Nice to meet you. Yeah, so can we talk with you for a few minutes? Sure. Would you like to have a seat? Okay, thank you. But you, you do look so familiar. Yes, uh, maybe you've seen our TV show. On TV show? Yes, on, uh, on Bilibili Pijan. Yes, we have a talk show 
called uh, informal talks or Fei Zheng Shi Hui Tan. Yeah. Okay, so could you introduce yourself to the camera? Sure. Hi everyone. I'm Brett. I'm from South Africa. And today I'm at the China Africa Economic and Trade Expo. Um, today my job is to supervise and help promote all South African businesses and products here at the Expo. And today we're at, at my background, we're at the South African Tourism um, Introduction. And this China Africa Economic Trade and Expo is a wonderful opportunity for uh, African enterprises and governments as well as uh, other private institutions to uh, have more formal cooperation with China. And here we're at uh, Hunan, Changsha. Um, it's my first time to come to Changsha and I think it's an excellent place. I actually met some people who recognized me from our, t our, our TV show. And so I know that um, you know there's a lot of people who support Africa that are from China. A lot of people want to understand South Africa. And I hope that um, in today's small introduction, uh, you have an opportunity to go to South Africa. So now, can you tell us more about the South Africa, this beautiful country? Because uh, it is well known for its picturesque landscape and the wild animals. Could you say something about this? Yes, so South Africa is one of the most developed countries in Africa. It's part of the South African development, uh, Southern Africa development community. It has a population of almost 60 million people. And there are more than 300,000 Chinese that are living in South Africa. and. China and South Africa have had historically great diplomatic ties and uh, I think that um, there needs to be a continued understanding of South Africa's history and South Africa's enterprises and institutions so that more Chinese businesses and institutions can also work with South Africa to do more investment, more trading, as well as understand South Africa's excellent um, natural resources, excellent human potential, as well as excellent uh, infrastructure for entrepreneurship and innovation. Okay, so how long have you been in China? Um, I've been in China for 10 years. 10 years? Yes. It's a quite long time. Yes, um, I came to China when I was 17 and uh, I registered at um, a school in Zhejiang to study medicine and I became a, a medical doctor and I landed my business in in China and in South Africa to do healthcare technology and investment and since I speak fluent Chinese I also help um, the South African embassies as well as a lot of South African companies to promote more cooperation with South Africa and to help more Chinese understand South Africa and uh, hopefully go to South Africa. Yeah. Okay, so during your stay in China over the past 10 years, what kinds of changes from your point of view have taken place in China-Africa trade ties like in cooperation? I think that's a great question. I was able to see China's massive growth in 10 years. I was in Zhejiang province for most of that time and Zhejiang province is known throughout the world as an internet as well as um, you know high infrastructure developing and developed as well as prosperous economy so I learned their model of innovation and entrepreneurship and I learned the model of how to promote talent recruitment government policy capital investment and quick quick um, um, organization so businesses can grow and so I think that South Africa has grown so much from its own potential as well as um, being helped by many different enterprises that have come to do cooperation from China and so at the China Africa Cooperation Expo like we are here today especially focusing on economic development South Africa is one of the best places and has received the largest foreign direct investment from China out of all African countries. So I hope in the future more investment into South Africa, more Chinese technology and South African technology coming together to solve African problems and Chinese problems and more um, African products like this wonderful uh, red tea to come to China and be introduced to the market so that we can both in understand each other uh, towards a shared future. Yeah. So uh, how is the investment environment now in South Africa? So South Africa has multiple free trade um, area uh, 
pilot projects all over the country. And um, I'm from KwaZulu-Natal. We have the Dubé uh, free trade area that's in Durban. And we also have Africa's biggest port, which is in Durban. We also have uh, one of, we have Africa's biggest stock exchange, which is in Johannesburg, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. So a lot of companies that are publicly listed that want to also open up uh, their trading in South Africa can easily go across. Um, so it's a great, it's a great um, country to do business in and to do cooperation. And that is why most foreign, uh, most Chinese overseas, Chinese who go to Africa, a lot of them go to South Africa first. It's a very friendly environment. Yes, it's a very friendly environment. Um, South Africa. Business. Yeah, South Africa's business environment is excellent. I don't know if you know, but uh, do you use WeChat? Yes, of course. And do you know the company that owns WeChat is Tencent? Tencent. And Tencent's biggest investor is a South African company. Did you know that? No. Yes. I, I never know that. So a South African company which is, uh, does investments, they are a publicly listed company. Uh, they were involved in media and other businesses also became an early investor in Tencent in the early 2000s. So South African entrepreneurs and businessmen also are very interested in Chinese companies. And you can see today that uh, Tencent's biggest contributor to their growth was a South African company. Did you know that the world's biggest diamond came out of South Africa? It's more than 3,000 carats, this Whoa. diamond. Yeah. Well, so impressive. So it's a really, really impressive country. Um, we also have many great scientists. Did you know the first person to do a heart transplant was in South Africa? No. <laughs> I don't. So there was an amazing doctor in Cape Town that did this, Dr. Christian Barnard. And uh, so South Africa's healthcare environment and medical science is also very, very excellent. A lot of the no new research for COVID-19 on vaccine as well as um, arrangements comes from South African research. So I think we should continue to develop more cooperation between China and South Africa. Yes. Yes. So uh, what kinds of products do, do you have for us today? So today uh, we have a lot of our uh, natural pro products like this aloe vera gel, especially used for healing wounds and for beauty care products. We also have um, a very famous South African wines and uh, um, uh, our wineries are very, very, very famous back in, in South Africa. And one of my favorite products is this rooibos tea. So black tea or green tea? It's a red tea. It's a red tea and it's made only in South Africa. And the amazing thing about this is it has no caffeine. Oh, no caffeine. Naturally no caffeine. It also has two amazing products that are help that are helping anti-age and uh, growth of different types of uh, cells that help you regenerate much faster. So South African rooibos tea is very good to have before you go to sleep um, or maybe after a full day of work. It's really good for refreshing. So I hope you can also try some some. Yeah, I think it's a must buy products for yes. women, for ladies. <laughs> yes. yes. Anti anti-age. So I saw there are a lot of wine brands, there's right? Lot, there's a lot of wine so brands. So yeah. what makes South Africa a outstanding wine region? So South Africa's wine, um, you know, history goes back to the 1600s and our Western Cape is one of the most developed wine um, areas in the whole world. And so we have very specific, uh, you know, farms specifically for different types of wines, different textures and consistencies. I'm not a wine expert, I don't drink, but I hope you can also interview some of our wine companies. Yes, they are more... Can we see those? Wines. Yes, you can have. Can a we talk as we walk? Because I, I, I see there are lots of wine brands. So, yes. so how popular uh, the South African wine are in China now? So, so as you know, you know, China's trade is very linked to the friendship of these countries and so South Africa has a great friendship with China yeah. so some some time ago due to deteriorating relations with other countries that they usually buy from 
South Africa is now one of the most important countries to do business with, especially for wine. So we can be even comparable to Spanish and Italian and other European wines. Yeah. And in my perspective, it's, it's probably even better because we have a, an amazing environment with sustainable development. So yeah. all the people that are employed in these wineries helps contribute to the economy of the area and helps to also give an understanding of why we should buy South African products and yeah. proudly South African is important. That really got me thinking. It's yes. a new perspective, you know. Yes. So, um, what do you think of this expo? I think the expo is a great opportunity for, for all of the African nations that want to stimulate economic growth, especially to tap the Chinese market, to learn consumer lifestyle and, and culture in China. Um, you know, in China over the last two years, the, the model of doing business online has now changed. You know, we now have like live stream e-commerce that can sell multiple thousands of goods in one, one day. So what kind of e-commerce platform in uh, South Africa? In South Africa, we use um, a platform called takealot.com. And it's, take a lot. Yeah, take a lot. In Africa, they also have Jumia, Kilimall, as well as others. And uh, take a lot uh, has about uh, two million, two million buyers at the moment. Yeah, um, I think daily that that, that, that browse the the system. You'll have to check. I'm not 100 percent sure, but but yeah, take a lot is is the most used e-commerce platform in South Africa. Yeah. yeah so the tea you just drank, you just recommend. Can, can I buy it from Tmall? Like you can buy it from Tmall. Tmall. You can buy it. You can buy it from Taobao, from Tmall. Um, our company actually has a a, a Tmall store and a Taobao store, so you can just search Nanfei Bo Shi Cha. Yes, and you will be able to find it. Yes. Yeah, I definitely want to try it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Sharing with us so thank much. So thank you. Good to meet you. Yeah. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. The Kilima we've mentioned before is a famous cross-border uh, e-commerce platform. And today they also set up a booth here uh, in online and offline exper experience area. So let's go check it out. Oh, hi, mister. Uh, I'm the reporter with Xinhua News Agency. Hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. So could you say hi to our camera? Hello. Hello guys, uh, my name is Yang Tao. I'm the founder and CEO of Kinimo. Uh, Kinimo is, uh, the name of Kinimo is originated from the highest mountain of uh, Africa, Kinimanjaro. Uh, why I founded Kinimo is because uh, when I work in, uh, in Africa, I see the price in the market is, is too high, almost three or five times higher than China's price. And uh, the supply, supply chain it's very hard to do business in Africa. Uh, that's why I founded Kinimo. Uh, when did this company f uh, found? Uh, I founded it in 2014. So this is the eighth year. Uh, so how we build it? Because um, we build the online marketplace. And we build the warehousing, logistics. Today, uh, the consumers who place order in our marketplace can get their parcel in the next day. So 90% of orders they can receive anywhere, like in Kenya, countrywide. And we built the online payment gateway. People could use the mobile money to put uh, their local currency uh, to our platform. And our centers will ship the orders once they got the payments. Uh, today, uh, we built the more than 1,000 uh, collection points uh, in Kenya. So the consumer can collect their parcel near their neighborhood. Uh, so we built the, we are the first one to, uh, to support the same day delivery. And today the, our marketplace sell uh, more than 1.9 million different products. So this is the 
biggest variety in the Africa continent. Yeah, so can you introduce to us about the um, best selling products on the okay. platform? Are, are, are these products over there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're selling uh, thousands of different brands like the home and living, uh, TV, audio, and uh, shoes, bags, and uh, clothes, uh, consumers, uh, consumer electronics, and some sample there. Uh, we can, there. yeah, some sample okay. there. Uh, actually, this is uh, the tablet. Yeah, we are currently we are the number one in terms of mobile shopping, mobile e-commerce. And we build the warehouse, we recruit hundreds of uh, employees in our warehouse. And we create uh, more than 10,000 jobs in Kenya, including the riders, customer service agents, and uh, in-house employees, uh, local centers. So we are not only a uh, we are not only have the overseas center, we also onboard the local centers. We help the Africa small businesses get on board and sell, uh, pitch the new customer, new markets. Uh, they feel this is a more efficient way to penetrate new markets. Yeah. Yeah. Is it only the Kenya or any other African countries? Uh, not only Kenya, but also uh, Uganda, Uganda, Nigeria. Oh. Our target is to every country in Africa and for yeah two years ago uh, we we built a new business called uh, Kenya Select it's uh, exporting exporting Africa made products to China the biggest market in the world uh, why we do this business uh, is because we see to, to create more jobs is to the best way is to uh, help Africa to build the manufacturing uh, business and sell the farming products from Africa to China and uh, help the Chinese consumers can enjoy the made in Africa products. I believe uh, this collection between China and Africa uh, will, will enrich nice, will enrich nice for Africa. Yes. So uh, can you take us to see the products over there? Are they exports or imports? Yeah, uh, this is uh, importing products. Oh. For example, the coffee from Kenya and uh, uh, this one is from Rwanda. Rwanda. Yeah. This is from Java Ethiopia. House. Yeah, Ethiopia. Uh, and uh, this one is some from Kenya. So are they quite famous among Chinese consumers? Uh, it's not quite famous. By it's growing, oh, it's, it's growing. growing, yeah. Uh, why we import this, per and also this wine is from South Africa. Okay. Uh, I believe, I like it very much yeah. myself, yeah. We just, we just came from the South Africa pavilion. Okay, this is a tea from Kenya, the red tea. Uh, yeah. They are exporting to Europe um, many years. Now we are introduced this product to Chinese consumers. Uh, now more and more Chinese consumers are yeah. beginning to eat. This is uh, uh, some uh, fruits from the Jacarado, uh, Jacarado yeah. uh, from, from Kenya. Yes. Yeah. And uh, the Chinese consumers uh, like it more and more uh, yeah. day by day. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm happy to introduce the... It's a bright product. future. <laughs> yes, thank you. And the products over there, are the exports, okay. right? Sorry? Exports. Yeah, export. Yeah. This is uh, sending the China products to Africa. So what kinds of um, products are they, basically? Uh, Electronic devices. Electronics. Yeah. We sell more than 1.9 million different products. So it's almost everything for the daily use. Is this perfume? Perfume? Yeah, perfume. Yeah. Bags and uh, cups. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, this is for selfie, yeah. headsets, earphones, earphones. Yeah. and uh, the speakers. Are they popular in African countries? Yeah, they like it very much. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the offline, they cannot get the variety. Yeah. We provide the best variety uh, to variety. the market. Yes. Just like uh, Tmall in Africa or like... 
why would you attend this expo? So I think uh, the China Africa Economic Ac Trade Expo is a very good uh, place to meet the to meet the uh, supply chain and the consumers uh, demand demand and the, the best way to match the demand and supply. Uh, here I meet the the best suppliers in their in China uh, in China, and uh, it's very give bring us uh, efficiency and the trust to meet suppliers face to face, uh, and also to help me understand the market, the Africa market, because we see uh, meet the people from different countries, and uh, you know to build the friendship uh, and the confidence, trust is very important. It's a very important platform. True, true. I'm thankful, I'm grateful uh, for China government to build this uh, expo to, and uh, it really enable uh, businesses like me to grow, to grow together, yeah. Okay, so thank you for sharing with us. Good luck to you and your company. You. Okay, bye bye. Good day. Good day. China has been the largest trading partner of Africa for 12 consecutive years. The Expo serves as a very important platform for cooperation and exchanges between companies on both sides. In the future, more efforts will be made to promote the bilateral cooperation in emerging fields such as aviation, green economy, digital economy, and so on. So ladies and gentlemen, our broadcast is coming to an end. If you guys are interested at this expo, please sub subscribe to us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And I will see you guys next time.